good day everyone so for today's experiment we will discuss experiment number three Newton's law of motion on the Atwood machine the objective of this experiment is to investigate the acceleration produced by a series of different forces applied to a fixed mass and demonstrate that the acceleration is proportional to the applied force. And second one, we will demonstrate that the constant of proportionality between the acceleration and the applied force is the mass to which the force is applied. So imagine we have here a mass one that is hung on the ceiling and that is tied on the rope. If we will see if there is a mass, so if there is a mass, there is also a gravitational force. This gravitational force has another name which is what we call commonly called as weight. If we know the mass of the object, we can definitely compute what is weight. And weight is just equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which is equal to 9.8 meter per second squared. So therefore, the unit of a weight, which is a gravitational force, which is a force, is equal to Newton. Now, based on the third law of motion, in every action, there should be an equal but opposite reaction. So therefore, uh, there should be a force that will counteract on it. And that is, in this case, is a tension because there is a rope here. That gravitational pull or the gravitational force experienced by the mass is also equal to the tension experienced by the rope. And this is based on the first condition of equilibrium. And since our system is in equilibrium, the summation of forces here is equal to zero. So therefore, everything that is going up is positive and everything that is going down based on here is negative. So T minus weight is just equal to zero. So since this is in equilibrium, the summation of forces is equal to zero. And tension is positive because it's going up minus weight which is going down is equal to zero and we if we will transpose weight to the other side we will come up as tension is just equal to weight or weight is equal to tension now if we will put this mass in a pulley system we call this as an atwood machine so we have here the mass one and this is the mass two so again our mass one has a weight one so that is weight one and since there is a force that is going down there should be another force that is going up because there's a rope here and that is tension remember the same rope should experience the same tension okay if since this is only one rope it experiences the same tension along it so whatever the tension here is also the same tension experiences on this side and with the idea of this, we can easily determine that M2 has the same mass with M1. So M1 is just equal to M2. And therefore, since they have the same mass, the weight is also equal. But remember, for computing this one, this is much complicated for the summation of forces. Because we have two masses, so we have a formula for mass 1, which is based on this, the summation of forces. So this is tension, which is going up, minus weight 1 is equal to 0. And for here, this is tension that is going up, minus W2 is equal to 0 since the tension are just equal so we can equate them so to equate them I have to derive this one so that we know that tension is just equal to weight 1 and for this this is tension is just equal to weight 2 again since tension is just equal on both system we will we can say now weight 1 which is equal here is just equal to way to in this side because they experience the same tension so we have the tension here and the tension here are just equal if the mass is not equal let's assume mass 2 is heavier than mass 1 so it is not in equilibrium 
So here, the mass 1 has a weight 1, and therefore, this rope here experiences a tension. And since we have the same tension along the whole rope, so it will be just the same here. And because mass 2 is heavier, therefore, we can assume that the weight of that is bigger compared to the tension of the rope. And because of this, the tension now is lesser than the weight 2, therefore, the, our system will accelerate downward. And for this, this is now not an equilibrium problem. And if the acceleration is going down for mass 2, the acceleration now for mass 1, as you can see, will experience the same magnitude of acceleration, but the direction is going up. Okay? And for this, we can compute that the summation of forces is not equal to 0, but it's equal to ma. And for our mass 1, it will be the summation of forces is equal to ma. So remember, in solving this type of problem, the direction of the acceleration, we will assume that is a direction positive direction. So tension have the same direction of acceleration, so therefore tension is positive, while weight 1 is negative, which is equal to, since this is not equal to 0, it will be mass times acceleration. So the mass involved here is m1 times the acceleration. And for this case, for our m2, so the summation forces again is not equal to 0, but equal to ma. And again, as I said, the direction of the acceleration is also the direction of the positive. So this, in this case, weight 2 is positive. Minus t is equal to mass, in this case, that is mass 2 times a. Again, the uh, objective of this experiment is to investigate the acceleration produced by a series of forces applied to a fixed mass and demonstrate that the acceleration is proportional to the applied force. So we have here, you have to complete the table, uh, the average time, the a heavy the heavier mass, the lighter mass, and the distance, you have to get this from the performed experiment. And remember, the average time is t, the heavier mass is m2, so I changed this one, so please check this one on your lab report, because this should be m2, the heavier mass, the lighter mass is m1, and the distance has a symbol of s. The unit of time is second. The heavier mass and the lighter mass, the unit of that should be in grams. And the unit of our distance, S, is in centimeter. There are two ways to solve the acceleration. For the first uh, formula for the acceleration, we will use distance and time to get the acceleration. And for the formula for acceleration too, we will use the masses of our object and we will multiply it. Now, supposedly, the acceleration for A1 should be equal to A2. And after you compute for A1 and for A2 for trial 1, you will repeat it for trial 2 and for trial 3. We will also get the percentage difference for the three trials by comparing the values of A1 and A2 for each trial. The percentage difference is equal to what is the difference of the two accelerations? So that is A1 minus A2 divided by the average of that two accelerations. So that is A1 plus A2 divided by 2. Then divide the difference and the average. Get the absolute, always positive, times 100. And we will get now the percentage difference. Do not also forget to give me the complete, complete solution for this experiment also answer data analysis conclusion and also the questions here.